Hello and welcome to the oldest golf course in Wales. This is Tenby Links. It was opened in 1888. If you're one of my viewers, please pop over to Golf Sidekick. There's a link below. See the front line. It's, right, it's rather fun. All of these dunes, ups and downs, hidden greens, it's fantastic. If you've come over from Golf Sidekick, thank you very much. Give us a subscribe and uh, I'll see what else I can show you along the way. Don't ever forget to enjoy where you are. No matter how the score's going. Enjoy this. We're in the cloud in the sky. The beach is just over here, the town's over there. You can hear children playing. Well, here's another child who's playing. Tenth hole. Yet another hole where you can't see a great deal. But there's a marker post, so we can focus in on that marker post, hopefully hit a good one. I used to hate blind shots with a passion. I don't mind admitting that. But these days, I try and take it and aim down the post. But I'm losing the ball to the right today and I can see the fault and I know exactly why I'm doing it. That's one to fix. Now these two holes show my inexperience with Lynx Golf. Because I really don't know what club to take to get the ball on the green. And this one's gone way through the back. And this can be an issue with Lynx Golf. It is very difficult to make a score once you start getting out of position. Back in the opposite direction. Just got two bunkers down there in the fairway to worry about. But the way I'm swinging, they're not actually too much of a worry because I'm absolutely miles off line yet again. One big bunker to worry about. I'm taking the four iron. Unfortunately, I hit this a little high on the face and it's not gonna get there. Bugger. This par 3 I remember from 20 years ago because I missed it to the right. So this tee shot is very much anti-right. And if you do miss it right, then you're down in this deep hollow. And there's not many pars from down here. Well, 13 is a short one, so I'm using any excuse I can to get a three wood in my hand and hopefully hit straighter shots. Sadly, that isn't one of them. You know, with Lynx Golf, you've got blind tee shots, you've got blind second shots, you've got humps, you've got hollows. The ball never finishes where you think it's going to finish. Now, you can throw your toys out the pram or you can get on with it, but either way, 
This is where the ball lies, and this is where I must play it from. Like it or lump it. So you might as well get on with it and do a good job. It's funny how much I'm saying would apply to me playing my own course. So it's not just Lynx Golf. This applies everywhere. Part of the green, 20 feet, more or less. I mean, I should be out there, but I didn't hit a good enough shot to be out there. So I got to play this. The very next thing I was going to say was it would be very useful to be playing as a four ball then I could watch everyone else's putts and perhaps learn something maybe get a bird seem to manage one on my own you know these these old golf courses they're built on the land that nobody else wanted the bit between the beach and the decent soil this is all sandy it's only useful for grazing sheep on, really. So these strips of land all around the British Isles coastline made excellent golf courses with the humps, the hollows, the natural shapes. Now they built one up in Scotland recently. They spent millions on it. First thing the designer did was bring in the bulldozers. Bulldozed all the dunes, made flat fairways. Basically, he screwed up what Mother Nature had provided. Now I'm sure it's an excellent golf course, but it is not a Lynx golf course. It's a Parkland course that someone's put on the coast. I'm sure people love it, but it is not this. This is history. This is Mother Nature. This is time. Time passes here. Time collects here. Well, now we've finally got him to shut up. There's a lot of rubbish down the left, and three bunkers down the right. With me losing the ball to the right, I definitely need a bit of luck here. Now, I didn't fancy taking on the green itself, but nor did I fancy laying back at 100 yards. But I wish I had, because this ball just disappeared from view. Bugger. Well, move over Phil Mickelson. Although you can see that being right up under the face of the bunkers here, you can't actually get the ball forward. And I really, really wish I could take the next two putts over again. Well, we cross the railway line now for three holes. This is a dog leg left. With me losing the ball right, I wasn't entirely sure what to do. And quite often, you end up doing nothing. So I've hit a very weak, poor drive. Now I've got a fairway bunker and a greenside bunker to go over. Finally able to put something positive in my mind. Through that tee shot, I didn't quite know where to hit. All I could see was these two enormous chasms down here. And of course, when your head is full of doubt, you hit a bad shot. So that is a classic case of me not focusing in on a target and hitting to that target and only thinking about the target. I'm thinking about these two. And that's when you get the bad shot. Now on this one, there's a cavern of a front bunker to get over. So I focused in on that one and I hit a bloody good shot. So let's go and make a bird. 
The golfing brain is rather fragile. And it doesn't matter what your handicap is. It's so easy to disappear into that downward spiral of indecision and bad shots. You know, indecision in golf is an absolute killer. Absolute killer for your score. And Lynx Golf really, really magnifies that. If you don't know where your ball is going to end up, if you don't know where to land your ball with a tee shot, and you don't know where to land your ball for your approach to the green, are you going to land on the green? Are you going to land short? Are you going to land left or right? What's going to be the favourable bounce into the green? If your head is full of indecision, you're going to hit a bad shot. So you have got to make up your mind what you want to do and do it. Enjoy the good strike. Enjoy the beautiful ball flight. And when you find your ball, no matter where it ends up, choo-choo train. But when you find your ball at the end of the, all the bounces and rolls and runoffs, you know, don't lose your rag. Work out the next shot, get on with it, make your decision. Even if that decision is ultimately completely wrong, it will be much better than you standing on the tee box or staring at a green wondering what on earth you're going to do. Par 5. It's not a birdie hole this one. Second shot is steeply uphill. I'll quite happily take a par from here. Thank you very much. So we finally got him to shut up again. Sorry to say from here on in there's a lot of out of focus shots. I don't know if the camera was getting cooked or not. As I say, I haven't picked up a club in a week. I almost missed the ball. One thing is certain is I was getting cooked, but at least I did the right thing here. 230 yards out of a poor lie with a ditch to get over. So to make sure we split it up into two shots, a time gives us enough loft to get the ball in the air. And then we have a simple gap wedge up onto this green. Didn't think the sand wedge would make it. And I think I was Ooh. certainly right about that. that. Nice. Now you're going to see some serious defensive putting. And sometimes you really do have to putt defensively whether you like it or not. So this is a massive over borrow. And that takes all the speed out of the ball. Leaves me the tap in. Had I been more aggressive, I could have had eight feet coming back. And I really don't want that. The 17 is a cracking downhill par three. And just for once, I've actually clubbed myself correctly to land just short between the two bunkers and roll it on. It's just a shame that you can't see it. <laughs> if it was ever a par three worth waiting for, it's this one. Yeah, I took the camera to the fore front of the tee box, took about a 10 second clip. When I looked at it on here, it was all out of focus. But the one thing I hope you take away from today's round is how many of these I tidied up from in par. You know, as I said in the first video, you don't need any extra skills to come and play a golf course like this. You just need a little extra imagination. One hole to go, 18th, out of bounds all the way down the left hand side. There's some huge dunes in front of the green so you can't see the green for your second shot. This has been a great day. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe. Help an old man out. Bye for now.
Finally I've hit a decent drive, almost dead straight, but it's run off the side of the fairway and it could be horrid when I get up there. You have to be able to accept the bad bounces on a golf course like this. Take it on the chin, plan the next shot, play the next shot as well as you can. That's all we can do. Ta-ra!